Indigenous Australians have been using the sky for thousands of years for anything from mapping travel routes and song lines to aiding dream time and creation stories. While a Western point of view would see constellations in terms of the Southern Cross or star signs, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples link constellations to figures of animals and the dream time. Ways which the dreaming explains particular landmarks also links the sky and the earth to an indigenous Australian's way of life. In astronomy, the study of planets and the night sky, constellations can change based on the time of year and this can indicate the availability of food or seasonal changes. In the Dreaming, a group of sky women danced as stars in the Milky Way. One of the women, who was carrying a baby, grew tired and placed her baby in a wooden basket. As the women continued dancing, the basket fell and the baby plunged to the earth. The baby struck the earth and was covered by the basket, the force of which drove the rocks upward, forming the circular mountain range we see today. The baby's mother, the evening star, and father, the morning star, continue to search for their baby to this day. Children are warned not to look at the morning star or the evening star as the mother and father are still searching for their baby that they lost during the dance up in the night sky. In Western astronomy, the evening star is very bright and is called the Min Min light. Whereas for Indigenous Australians, this bright light is the mother looking for her child. As we can see here, the dreaming links the sky and the land to Indigenous culture. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the phenomenon of the Min Min lights, I've included a link below. Now I'm going to go over two stories which cover figures that only appear in the sky during summer. Near the southern celestial pole there are two objects that appear to be clouds floating in the night sky. These clouds are thought by many tribes to represent the old people of their tribe who are watching over their families. The larger clusters of stars is that of the man, and the smaller cluster is the woman. The bright star between them is the food which they have cooked on their campfire. This constellation is visible for many months, but this is best observed late November to early December. In the dream time, there lived two creatures who provided people with a way to send messages from one indigenous country to another. The frill necked lizard known as Big Ears lived on the land and was able to convey messages in sand with his feet and tail, whereas the cockatoo lived up in the sky and in the stars, and he was able to fly and speak to the indigenous peoples on the land below and relay messages. Indigenous Australians didn't have fancy instruments such as telescopes, so they used what they could see. With the sun and moon being the most distinct objects in the sky, it's no wonder many indigenous countries have similar stories about them. The moon once was thin, but ate and ate and ate and became round and lazy, and this is represented by the change in the moon phases. When he died, he waited three days before rising again as the new moon. While this story is quite common, it varies slightly between countries, with one saying that the moon devoured the spirits of those who disobeyed laws. In such stories, the sun is often a woman and the moon a man. In the morning, the sun paints herself red some of which spills onto the clouds, creating the sunrise. She then crosses the night sky from the east to the west with a torch, which creates daylight. 
some people believe that when they die, they're taken by a mystical canoe into the spirit island in the sky. Their campfires can be seen burning all along the edge of the great river of the Milky Way. The canoe is then sent back to the Earth as a shooting star to let their family members on Earth know that they have arrived safely to the spirit land. As we've discovered, the dreaming, as told through the night sky, shows that all people of past and present are interrelated through the land. While stories can differ due to being told verbally and through language barriers, the stars and sky tell similar stories universal throughout Australia. It's also important to note here that not all Indigenous people adhere to the same stories and customs, and that these beliefs shouldn't just be assumed. If you'd like to find out more, I've included some links in the description for further reading.